some people have an unusual tendency to develop allergy towards common substances in the environment. This means some people are genetically more inclined to allergy and it is called a tuppy. For example, a person with a tuppy at first has skin irritation, redness and itching called tatopic dermatitis. Later in life, allergic rhinitis develops, causing runny nose and sneezing and nasal congestion on dust, pollen or dander. And sometimes it leads to asthma with breathing difficulty, coughing and wheezing attacks to environmental allergens. And around 20% of population has atopic dermatitis and almost the same amount has allergic rhinitis. It highlights how common these conditions if we consider what atopy is in childhood usually it is red itchy patches of skin often on the face and flexural areas like the elbow or behind the knees allergic rhinitis causes runny nose itchy nose sneezing watery and itchy eyes and nasal congestion these symptoms can be seasonal or during the whole year and asthma is episodes of wheezing, shortness of breath, chest tightness and cough, often triggered by allergens. Asthma symptoms also vary greatly. Some have mild intermittent symptoms, others require continuous therapy. Patients often present in childhood with eczema. As they grow, they may develop allergic rhinitis and potentially asthma. This natural progression of allergic diseases is sometimes called the atopic march although it doesn't mean that every person who has atopy will have such disease progression from eczema to allergic rhinitis and asthma. Symptoms and diseases vary and it is possible to have eczema development without asthma or asthma without prior eczema. People with atopy commonly have genetic basis. It is strongly genetic. If one parent has atopy or asthma, there is a 50 percentage chance that the child also will have atopy and if both parents are affected then the child has an 80 percentage risk of atopy the main mechanism of atopy is considered genetic predisposition to inherit genes that favor immunoglobulin and mediated allergic responses to environmental allergens like pollen dander and dust it is called type 1 hypersensitivity upon exposure to an allergen the immune system produces immunoglobulin e that binds to mast cells and basophils re-exposure triggers histamine and other mediators release this histamine causes dilation of blood vessels redness and itchiness of skin also histamine stimulates mucus production which can contribute to runny nose congestion and increased phlegm histamine stimulates nerve endings the most accepted hypothesis about atopy is genetic weakening of the skin barrier it allows allergens and microbes to penetrate the skin easily it sensitizes the immune system to environmental allergens and predisposing to rhinitis and asthma for example mutations in the filaggrin gene which is crucial for skin barrier function are strongly associated with atopic dermatitis and an increased risk of developing asthma and allergic rhinitis on the other hand there is the hygiene hypothesis which says that living in a more hygienic environment increases susceptibility to allergy early childhood exposure to a diverse range of microbes bacteria viruses parasites is crucial for the proper development and education of the immune system atopy associated eczema usually starts in infancy and early childhood and allergic rhinitis and asthma frequently begin in childhood in early childhood boys have a slightly higher rate of atopic dermatitis and asthma by adulthood the gender difference often evens out or can shift Eosinophils are often elevated in peripheral blood tests in atopic patients, though not always. Mild to moderate eosinophilia can be seen in those with active allergic inflammation. Many atopic individuals have high total IgE levels in their blood. Elevated IgE and eosinophilia are common but not universal. Some with atopy have normal IgA and eosinophil levels. 
This for diagnosis, a small amount of allergen is pricked into the skin localized wheel and flare indicates sensitization. For asthma diagnosis, spirometry and bronchial provocation tests are used. Assess lung function and demonstrate reversibility or hyperreactivity, for example, methacholine challenge. A substantial percentage, up to 50 to 70 percentage, show improvement by teenage years, though some have persistent or relapsing disease into adulthood. In case of asthma, some children experience a decrease in symptoms in late adolescence, but many remain symptomatic lifelong. For treatment, autopic dermatitis, emollients, moisturizers, topical corticosteroids and topical calcineurin inhibitors are used for allergic rhinitis intranasal corticosteroids, for example, fluticasnane, oral or intranasal antihistamines are effective. For oral intake, second generation oral antihistamines, for example, cetirizine, loratadine or dysloratadine are used daily or as needed. Minimizing exposure to known allergens is a key aspect of management. If allergic rhinitis will not be treated, it can be complicated as uncontrolled nasal inflammation, sinusitis, nasal polyps, or persistent congestion. Chronic sneezing, congestion, and post-nasal drip can interfere with sleep and daily activities. If asthma will be left untreated, ongoing untreated inflammation in the airways can lead to structural changes called airway remodeling, which over time may reduce responsiveness to bronchodilators. It will cause persistent wheezing, shortness of breath or activity limitations. Repeated exacerbations can cause a gradual decline in lung function. If someone has untreated severe asthma, they might begin showing COPD-like symptoms or fixed obstruction in mid to late adulthood.